Here's one for you to try that involves a little bit of trigonometry. It says find the absolute maximum and minimum for the function f of x equals x squared plus inverse cosine of x on the interval negative 1 to 1. Well, let me remind you of the steps. Step 1 is to find all the critical points. Step 2 is to evaluate f at all the critical points and at the endpoints. And then you basically take the largest from step 2, that's the maximum, and the smallest from step 2, that's the minimum. One more thing to remember is that the derivative of arc cosine of x, just in case that slipped your mind, is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so pause the video, try this out, see if you can find that absolute maximum and minimum, and then we'll talk about it together. Okay, let's take a look. So we need to find the critical points. Remember, that's where the derivative equals 0 and where the derivative does not exist. So let's start with that and then go from there. Okay, so our derivative is f prime of x equals 2x. So I guess that would be minus 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. And we need to set this to 0 to see what happens here. Let's go ahead and do a common denominator here of square root of 1 minus x squared. So I'll take my 2x and multiply on the top by square root of 1 minus x squared and on the bottom by square root of 1 minus x squared. I'm running out of room there. Now note that this does not exist, does not exist where this denominator equals 0, um, but that's where 1 minus x squared equals 0, which occurs at x equals plus or minus 1 which these are already our endpoints here. So we're already testing those anyway. So we don't really get much new out of that, which is good actually, because the fewer points we have to test, the better. Let's look at the numerator. We have two X square root of one minus X squared, um, e minus one equals zero. So I'm just gonna add the one to both sides to, to get equals one. From there, we will square both sides. Okay, so we're squaring this thing out on the left and the right. So on the left, that gives us 4x squared times the quantity 1 minus x squared equals, and then 1 on the right, distribute the 4x squared through 4x squared minus 4x to the fourth equals 1. Well, I always like to keep my leading coefficient positive, so I'm going to move everything to the right. So this gives us zero equals, all right, four x to the fourth minus four x squared plus one. And note that this is a perfect square trinomial. So this factors nicely as something squared. Well, what squared? How about two x squared minus one quantity squared? And this is still equal zero. So that tells us that just this inside bit equals zero, two x squared minus one equals zero. Solving that gives x equals plus or minus one over the square root of two. If the square root in the denominator bothers you, feel free to write that as square root of two over two. Okay, well both plus and minus one over rad two are in the domain of our function, though we'll probably have to think a little bit more about the domain and range of arc cosine of x. So let's do that as we move to test our points. So what all do we have to test? We have to test both those critical points of plus or minus one over rad two, and of course our endpoints of our interval, negative one and one. So let's test the function on all those points. Okay, well let's take a look at arc cosine of x because we need to think about domain and range a little bit and there's a few ways to think about this, but I think the way I'll choose today is to look at it as a graph of arc cosine. It's, it's helpful to remember this graph. It looks like this. And the domain goes from negative one to one. It's just a helpful way to, to encode a lot of information. My graph is not perfect, but this would be pi up here, and this would be pi over two, halfway down. Again, my graph is not ideal, but it looks something like this. Right, so you can use this graph or you can reason through each little bit of like, okay, what's cos cosine of what gives us negative one, but then you have to remember where the cosine got cut off to create the inverse function. So 
A lot of times it's easier if you can remember this one graph for arc cosine and arc sine, and actually arc, arc tangent as well. Those three, it pays dividends as you move through these calc courses, calc 1 and calc 2. Okay, so coming back to f of negative 1, we have x squared, so that's negative 1 squared, plus arc cosine of negative 1. Well, we can see from our graph that that's pi, so we have 1 plus pi, which comes to about 4.14. 4.14. Okay, so that's a start. Let's look at f of negative 1 over rad 2. Right, we plug that in, we get, well, negative 1 over rad 2 squared is 1 half plus, okay, now for the challenging part, arc cosine of 1 over rad 2. Well, it's going to be one of the 45 degrees, or the pi over 4 angles, if you recall that from your trig. Well, it's not pi over 4, because cosine of pi over 4 gives us 1 over rad 2. The next one up is 3 pi over 4. I'm kind of thinking now in terms of the unit circle in a sense here, so I tried pi over 4, nope. Now I'm going to try 3 pi over 4, and indeed all students take calculus, so that tells us cosine will be negative here. So indeed, it is 3 pi over 4 that we're looking for. That is arc cosine of 3 pi over 4 equals negative 1 over rad 2. So 3 pi over 4. Now, you may be saying, well, why, don't, why not just pick 5 pi over 4 or 7 pi over 4? Well, 7 pi over 4 would be positive because that's in quadrant 4. But 5 pi over 4 would be outside of our range here of arc cosine, which only goes from 0 to pi. So... Certainly plenty of trig to think about when you're evaluating these inverse trig functions. And when we evaluate this with a calculator, we get about 2.86. All right. Next, we evaluate f of 1 over rad 2. Same idea here. We get 1 half plus. And now we need arc cosine of 1 over rad 2. Well, that's simply pi over 4. Pi over 4. Toss that into a calculator we get about 1.29. And finally, we evaluate at the right endpoint. So f of 1 is 1 squared, which is 1, plus arc cosine of 1, which is 0. Well, that gives us 1. So next, we compare all these values, right? We have 4.14, 2.86, 1.29, and 1. So it looks like we have a max of 4.14 and a minimum of 1. So then the way we might write our answer is absolute max of, let's, let's keep it as pure as possible with no rounding, so I'll say 1 plus pi at the point x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1. Okay, and then our absolute min is 1 at the point x equals 1. So it's interesting, though we had critical points happening in between the endpoints, our maximum and our minimum still occurred at the endpoints.